Hi, I'm Dennis with Terraflex. You know, recently our guys up in the customer service department have been getting a lot of calls on alignments and what needs to be done to make a modified dream vehicle drive right. You know, if you think about it, an alignment is the final step to any lift install. If you screw it up, it's not going to drive right. So what we've done tonight is we've put together a video where we can share some alignment techniques and methods with you so that you can make that Terraflex Jeep drive as good as it looks. The first thing that we need to do before we do any alignment is to make sure that all the steering components are tight in front of the Jeep. To do that, I've asked my buddy Kirk here to, to start the Jeep up for us and rock the steering wheel back and forth. He doesn't need to move it a long way. You don't have to go lock to lock, but just load it back and forth so we can take a look at the tie rod ends and so forth. Make sure that everything's tight under the front end. While he's rocking that steering wheel back and forth on the ground, it puts a lot of load on these components, and we'll see some things that we normally wouldn't see. Let's make sure that this tie rod end is nice and tight. We're also going to make sure that these nuts are tight on the stud. We've had these coming loose. And also make sure that your track bar is good and tight. A little bit of movement in this one, no, not much at all. Looks really good. We can also take a look at this pitman arm. Pitman arm and the adjusting sleeve as well all need to be checked to make sure that they're tight. All right, this little exercise is one of the quickest, most effective ways that we have of checking steering components. This thing is now ready to go. We did a TJ long arm kit last night, and it'll be a great one for us to line. We can go through all the angles on it. You probably noticed this research and development sticker on the side of the Jeep. It's because it's got our latest pre-runner kit on it. The Terraflex pre-runner kit is designed to give an unbelievably nice street ride and second to none trail capabilities. But what's really unique about the Terraflex Pre-Runner Kit is its ability to run the desert at speed. The new Terraflex Pre-Runner Kit includes a redesigned lower arm for maximum travel, the new Terraflex tuned Fox Reservoir shocks, Terraflex speed bumps, mounted front and rear, limiting straps, and much more. This 3-inch Pre-Runner Kit, running 35-inch tires, has 11 inches of travel. It is one exciting ride. Now let's go get started on our alignment. Before we get going on the alignment on this TJ, let's put it up in the air and we'll take a look at the suspension under it so we can kind of familiarize ourselves with Terraflex's Pro Kit. This Terraflex Pro Kit is really a great piece of suspension work. The engineering on it is really nice. You've got long lower control arms. We've got a triangulated upper long arm system, which included the brackets on both ends for mounting it up. Um, it makes it so that all of our angles are adjustable on this. Because of the upper triangulation on it, we don't have a track bar anymore. That enables this axle to really flex. So this is one flexy kit, and it drives really nice on the road as well. What we're going to be doing is adjusting our lower control arms to get our axle positioned front to back, and also to get our pinion angle set right. We're also going to use our upper control arms to position the axle side to side. Because it's triangulated, if we shorten one arm and lengthen the other, it's going to make that axle shift back and forth and we'll be able to position our axle so that it's straight underneath the Jeep. This skid plate actually gains us a good four inches of ground clearance without doing any lift at all. It also protects the arms and of course your transmission and transfer case. As we come forward, the lower control arms on the front have their own mounts incorporated with the kit. They're adjustable, so we'll be able to make all of our caster angle changes with these arms, as well as using the adjustment in the upper arms. So we've got straight upper and lower control arms. Because the geometry is straight with these arms, we still use a track bar on the front. So our track bar will be used to, to center the axle side to side, and we'll use these adjustable arms to center the axle in the fender well as well as give us any caster angles that we need. All right, we've rolled this TJ on the rack. We've got our heads on it. We've done our run out. We're uh, ready to set the brake pedal depressor, which we talked about earlier, the importance of making that brake pedal depressor is on there good and tight. We're going to be moving these suspension as much as an inch in some cases, so we need to make sure it's tight. All right, we're ready to do our caster sweep. Start by just doing what the machine basically tells us. These new alignment machines are the greatest. A caster is kind of a funny angle. The machine has to see us turn the wheel 
we're gonna go 10 degrees one direction and 10 degrees the other direction, and then it'll do the math on this. You're really gonna just tell us the position of the ball joints. It wants to know if the lower ball joint is ahead of the lower upper ball joint or behind it, and it'll calculate our caster angle for us. All right, we got it both directions. We center it up. And let it pull up the numbers for us. There we go. All right, we've got the numbers up on the screen. Let's just take a look at what we've got and kind of make a plan of what we're going to do. The alignment uh, angles on this screen, we start with our toe in at the bottom. It looks like we got 0.3 degrees of toe. The next one is our camber, and our camber is pretty evenly matched. That'll be nice. And then at the top here is our caster angle, and we're at 7.8 degrees of caster. Now, factory specs call for about seven degrees. But we can't use factory specs when we do a, a lifted vehicle. There's a problem with the pinion angle is the big issue. If you run that much caster, your pinion angle is going to be so low that it's going to eat that front drive line up. So we have to kind of do a balancing act. We have to juggle the caster and that pinion angle together to get an angle that will work. We'll leave this screen that shows all the front steering angles. And we're going to take a look at the rear because we're going to start with the rear and get that all squared up and then we'll move up to the front. So let's see what we've got. Okay, looks like we're sitting at 0.3 degrees positive on our rear thrust angle. That isn't too bad. That's probably our maximum spec that we want to ever see. We'd like it to see at zero, so that's what we're going to go for. This is our toe, and that just, uh, that just validates our thrust angle. We can see that the axle, this side is towed out, and that side is towed in. So our axle is actually kicked off to the right just a little bit in the back. We'll go back and take a look and see if that's true. The top one is our camber angle. We can't do anything with that. It's a solid axle. All right, when we go back to look at the rear of this, we're gonna be juggling four angles at once. We're gonna be looking at the thrust angle that we saw on the screen. We're gonna be looking at how the tires are centered in the fender well. We're also gonna be looking at how the tires are placed. Do they stick out on one side or the other? And then we're also gonna be looking at the pinion angle. We wanna make sure that that driveline angle is looking good. The first thing we're gonna do is look at the position of this wheel in the fender well. We wanna know if it's too far forward or too far to the back. Now these are Jeep guys. They wanna have as much wheel base as we can give them. So let's make sure that we put those wheels as far back as we can without it rubbing. Say on this instance, we're gonna look at this we see that gap there, we look at the gap back here. It looks like it's a little bit further forward. So we can cheat this back a little bit more, give him some wheelbase and center that up in the fender well. So mental note, we'll look at that. Let's now go around to the back and let's see how that axle's positioned under the Jeep. Is it sticking out to the side one way or the other? Mm -hmm. 